Hello dear listeners, you're welcome to the platform today and today we want to look at one of the non-African wins as recommended by West Africa Examination Council and also for those people that this particular poem is used for or that is going to benefit from the poem, the analysis of the poem. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the background of the poem. This poem was written during the 19th century at a time when the English society was undergoing multiple transformations which revolved around religion, ideology, urbanization, and migration, to mention but a few. In the midst of the chaos, that is the problem at that time, the poetic persona seems to tune out the world to focus on just one thing, and the thing is nature. Bensi Papalas was written in 1879, shortly after Jeremiah Hopkins went to visit a river in Gosto, that is in uh, Oxfordshire in England, and to discover that the aspen trees that had previously lined its banks, that is the bank of the river, had been cut down. The wood gotten from these trees was used for the railways, that is the track of the railway which at that time was a very lucrative uh, business or industry. So the felling of these trees affected Hopkins profoundly, I mean seriously. So he viewed it as a disfigurement of the beauty of nature. And he wrote Bensi Poplar's to express his feelings about the destructive act, that is, the felling of the trees. In this poem, the poet bemoans man's reckless destruction of the environment as well as its effects. That is, for a person to just look at something that people are benefiting from and you just destroy it anyhow without minding the benefits to humanity. And also that the, pro, uh, the poet focused on nature was not surprising, especially since the poetry of the, uh, the poetry of the romantic tradition was in full bloom at that time. The entire poetic focus is on the destruction of the natural heritage of uh, Great Britain. However, the focus on nature serves as a launch pad for the poets to talk about a host of other things as well as establish the enduring links between England's rich history and nature as pertaining England, the Great Britain. So after that, I'm going to look at the foregrounding notes of the uh, poem, that is examining the features of the poem. G. M. Hopkins Bensi uh, Poplars is a poem crafted in 25 lines. That is why you need to get a copy of the poem so as to follow this analysis. Precisely, the poem showcases Hopkins' flair for redemic device flourish. In this regard, the device of minor Isaiah is deftly deployed to list the pieces of message in this particular poem. Lines 9 to 11, yes, it reflects the above points, that is, the depth uh, deployment of a uh, minus Isaiah. And in these lines, that is line to 11, uh, 9 to 11, Hopkins makes the point that swallow birds 
that particular bird that looks like bats. Swallow birds that stayed as colonies on top of the trees and thereby added value to the original shade from them had been displaced. Can you see now? The handwork of a destructive person. When you look at something that people benefit from and just destroy it. So because of this, the birds called swallow, they relocate from that particular area to another place, which is not okay by Hopkins. Meanwhile, the readers can only correctly pick the piece of message in line 11 after the minor society deployed in line 10. Again, GM Hopkins deploys some clever repetitions to establish the unhappy mood, unhappy mood of the poet, in which the destruction of the forest of Bincy confines him. He's not happy at all about the felling of the trees. The poem's line 3 gives good accounts of these points. Thus, all failed, failed are all failed. That is line 3 of the poem. Can you see that? And here, the good account in question is underscored by the pathos. That is a particular poetic uh, device. Or you call it speech figure. Not paronomasia and this underscored in the line plus the combined effect elicited by the cases of assonance with the alliteration in it look at it again all failed we have a there we have f starting the field failed are all failed we have another f again from the word fail failed and all Another A again. Ah, A also there. So this combines the device called assonance and alliteration in it. After that, what we are going to examine next is the setting of the poem. And when we say setting, we are talking about the physical setting of the literary the literary work so also social setting and psychological setting. So the setting of the poem being the populace is set in the 19th century in Britain, specifically during the Victorian era. The 19th century was both an immensely prosperous and a chaotic time for the people of Great Britain. The Victorian era was a period where industrialization had just started evolving. More specifically, the poet is set on the bank, sorry, the poem is set on the bank of a river which was once surrounded by trees because the trees are felled. So the poem is mournful as the poetic persona laments the felling of these trees. He also bemoans man's ill-treatment of nature and reflects on its far-reaching far effects. Increased exploration, travel, and wealth created a society more stratified by class and wealth. The middle class was already in existence and increasing in numbers due to a high rate of a migration of people from the rural parts of Britain to the more urbanized area for work in the factories. Industrialization during this period was at its crudest stage, that is the time that people uh, industries have not been that available or made ready for people to work in. So this leading to many negative uh, ecological and atmospheric uh, consequences of the country. 
the increasing uh, industrialization and migration led to a neglect of the rural areas at that time. So, Bincy, when Hopkins wrote the poem, was a place in England with the heritage of a lovely landmass, a location beside the sea, and idyllic and natural vegetation. The emergence of inventions and more innovation led to the loss of more lands and a shift in the European mindset from nature and natural ways of doing things to technology and the innovations aimed at getting things done in an easier and faster way. Constantly, nature was being despoiled daily, something that Hopkins found unpleasant and unacceptable only to him. He found it unacceptable. So that is that about the setting of the poem. And next is the subject matter of the poem. To most uh, 21st century readers with little knowledge of the names of plants and trees, especially those of the softwood variety, the title Bensi Poplars would hardly ring a bell. One might think uh, this is a name of a band, or uh, mistake it for an Irish saying or imagine it as a name used to qualify a set of people during the Victorian age. It is while reading the poem that one gets enlightened to the fact that the poem is talking about trees. The poem describes and eulogizes the trees with a tinge of melancholy throughout the first stanza and shifts to talk about the effects of man's interaction with nature in second stanza. In this poem, the poet mourns the cutting down of some aspen trees. The trees are aspen. He considers these acts of needless destruction and environmental vandalism. He also reflects on the fact that such acts of destruction gradually strip nature of her beauty. Because people will be building uh, companies, having industries, and from this, the nature is being taken and there will be nothing else left for people around to explore. That is what uh, Hopkins is talking about. And thus, in the end, the title becomes a means to an end because the poem uses the effect of the felling of a tree uh, to show the larger picture of the devastating effects of industrialization on earth. So that is the subject matter of the poem, as you can see. So the next thing there is the form of the poem. And when we talk about form, we are looking at the kind of a poem it is. So here, G.M. Hopkins' Bincy Poplars is a romantic poem because it transmits as a form of remarkable celebration of real importance of the trees called Aspen or populous forest of Bincy, that is a place in uh, England, before its destruction or deforestation. So the point made above is justified by the great passion with which Hopkins presents the poem titled Bincy Populous. I hope this is all clear to you, and if there is anything you want me to do, you can comment below the video and I will actually and definitely do whatever you want. So let's look forward to more videos to come as pertaining the analysis of this poem, Bincy Poplars by Gerard Manley Hopkins. I wish you a great day ahead and 
be aware that coronavirus is real. Thank you.